Um, hello everyone. Um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick introduction of the next few clips you're about to see. Um, what's going to happen is that we are starting our thermal vacuum test. Um, so let me just give you a quick introduction of what, or the reason why we're doing this thermal vacuum test. Um, as you may know, um, what I'm doing is that I'm tagging, I'm tagging along on the SSPL project. Uh, their project is uh, the, their CubeSat, and their CubeSat is going on a HASP balloon flight. Um, this balloon is, if you're not sure, if it's, it's sponsored by NASA and actually built by NASA, and it's a helium balloon that goes up around 36 to 40 kilometers. So uh, this is a tool that is available to other schools as well to uh, give the devices um, a, like a, a high altitude test. Um, and so what I get to do is that I'm tagging along by attaching my uh, one of the commercial phones that I have to the, the CubeSat from SSPL and we're sending that up onto the Hass balloon. Now the reason that we're doing this thermal vacuum testing is uh, there's two reasons exactly. The first one of course is to see if the phone can handle the environment it's about to about to experience on the Hass balloon flight itself. Uh, this is the initial step. Uh, let, me give, let me just give you a quick overview on the environment we should expect to see. Um, on the Hass balloon flight, we should expect to see a height around, like I said, 36 to 40 kilometers. This would create around 7.97 torr of pressure on the phone. This would also, um, on the way up, the ascent and descent, the temperature should experience temperatures of a range from negative 40 to 40 degrees Celsius. Um, and the second reason that we would want to do thermal vacuum testing is is sort of what you could say an initial testing phase um, before this before a commercial phone could be space ready. Now, a phone not, wouldn't necessarily be exposed to uh, directly exposed to the harsh elements of space. For example, the either negative 10 torr pressures or uh, the the freezing cold temperatures. However, this allows us to see the range of temperatures that the phone can handle so that we know how large or how small a range we have in order to keep this phone functioning in, while in space. Um, enough for the introduction. Let me just give you a quick overview, overview of what you will see in the next few clips. Uh, the first progress, uh, progress clip will be of me turning on the thermal vacuum chamber and then starting to pump it down to around 7 or 8 torr. Eventually, of course, it will be down to 7, seven torr even though the only t pressure we will expect to see, the lowest pressure, I'm sorry, will be 7.97 torr. So 7 torr should be plenty. Um, as far as temperature goes, the device that I'm using only allows me to go down to negative 20 degrees Celsius instead of negative 40, which of course poses a problem because after the, after the temperature test, we won't know for sure if the phone can handle temperatures lower than negative 20 degrees Celsius. However, uh, the next thing that we can do is just go as low as possible, try to bring down the machine as low as it can, and then go from there. Uh, after we get down to the right pressure, we will start lowering the temperature down, and then once this temperature has been has been uh, acquired, we will go ahead and begin our testing phase by starting the LabVIEW program. This program will record temperature sensor data, data from the front of the phone, one temperature sensor is attached to the front of the phone and the other temperature sensor which will be attached between the phone and the battery itself. Uh, just a quick reasoning on why uh, these temperature sensors are positioned where they are. Uh, for, as far as the surface goes, we want to see the temperatures that expose to the surface. For example, if we, if we would see a crack or a break on the surface of the phone, whether it's the, the front or the back of the phone, we could see a range of temperatures that might affect this phone's functionality and structure. As, fo as far as the temperature between the battery and the phone itself, this, although not close to the, although not inside and touching the electrical components itself, it will see, we'll, this will allow us to give us a rough idea of the temperatures uh, that the internal components might experience. So for example, there's a, a malfunction in the camera system, not in the physical lens, but in one of the components, we might be able to see a range of temperatures for where this might happen. So both, I believe, are required uh, for a good test. 
um, moving on from the temperature sensors, uh, you will see s after we uh, get down get down to the temperature we require. Like I said, we're going to start the lab view program, and once again, I will show you some progress clips along the way, and we'll go from there. All right, this is uh, some initial testing we're doing with the thermal vac chamber, and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. I don't have much else to say. Let's see if I can. What pressure do you want? Uh, seven, I'll just do eight tour. Eight tour. Actually, I'm holding that for a sec. Oh, we can take this too. Uh, we're actually waiting for uh, the thermal vac chamber to pump down to negative 20 degrees Celsius. Um, at that point, that's when I can start um, start running the program called LabVIEW. Um, in this program, basically, I have two sensors connected up, two temperature sensors uh, connected up to the phone. I don't know if you can see inside there, um, but the phone's on right now. The phone is recording, and there's two temperature sensors. One connected to the uh, front screen and then one connected between the battery and the phone itself and so we're gonna this program is actually gonna run once I say um, once I click start and it's going to start recording the temperatures indicated by the temp sensors on the phone now we have reached about negative 20 degrees Celsius and from here on we're gonna go ahead and start our program hit record, select our temperature sensors, we have two of them, click OK, and it's recording. Alright, so we're going to do this for 15 minutes, and then at the 15 minute mark, we're going to go ahead and uh, switch the temperature back, or I mean raise the temperature to negative 10 degrees Celsius, and then from there we're going to keep incrementing from uh, we're going to keep incrementing 10 degrees, and with each uh, 10 degrees we're going to go ahead and wait five minutes. So at 10 degrees Celsius we'll wait five minutes. At zero degrees Celsius we'll wait five minutes, and, and so on and so forth. Um, as we reach our max, which we want to be 40 degrees Celsius. We'll go ahead and wait another 15 minutes. So basically what we're doing is we're testing both the extremes at 15 minutes and then incrementing up to each extreme by inc uh, increments of 10 degrees, uh, 5 minutes each. And uh, after that, we'll go ahead and shut it down, take out the phone, uh, run a couple of tests. Um, for example, see if it's still, see if it's still on, uh, see if it'll still record video, and see how it functions overall.